What's up, Anglers? Mike here. And before we get started on this episode of the Get Made Show with Golden State Fishing, I just want to introduce you to Saul of Sapos Tacos. How's everybody doing? Man, we had a chance meeting um, here in San Diego on a kayak trip, and we got to talking, and Saul is here sponsoring the Get Made Show with the family buffet of, man, Viria. That's my favorite. So he said that. He had me at Vidia. He didn't have to say anything more. So we got talking. And Saul, I want to thank you, Lucy, your wife, who actually won the, the giveaway for Salt Maid, uh, for being here, man, and for, you know, sharing your food with us. I'm, I'm a big – I'm not a foodie per se, but I, could, I can appreciate food, man. And uh, we, we appreciate, appreciate you having here in the studio and, and – and, Man, feeding my guests yeah, in no, my home, man. No, Appreciate man, you. I, it's, a, it's a great pleasure for me, honestly, man. Like, I honestly feel like it was a, a meant to be kind of thing. You know what I mean? It's it's pretty cliche-ish, but, you know, honestly, that, that does happen sometimes in life. And, you know, it's like throughout this whole ordeal with, like, COVID and everything, like, you know, starting up side, business, side businesses with my wife and stuff. And, you know, I, I happened to tag her on this contest, and she won. <laughs> and then she sent me and Elias, me and my me and my boy, my six year old boy. We met Mike out there, and uh, you know the first one of the first conversations that striked up was about birria, you know, and that's that's my thing. That's his thing, thing, anglers. You know? That's um, his thing. Well, actually, you know, when it comes to cooking, I cook all kinds of stuff. But birria is one. It's like my. It's, that's you know, your jam. I, I get into it. It's Specialty. My it's my jam. It's my, it's my specialty. And it's really, and it's really hard to. It's a process, anglers. If you don't know this this dish is a is a process and i think i i had you know he had to test my knowledge so i had to test my knowledge <laughs> about vd i want you you know and i spit yeah, out yeah, some yeah. ingredients right no no you know mike 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 was spitting out the ingredients that are typically used in a birria mm -hmm. don't ask me right now well, let, let me tell you like <laughs> there's there's a lot of different uh a lot of different types of beaters out there um, everybody likes to do it their own way, but mm -hmm. uh, you know somebody that's that's you know talking about you know putting cloves in it and putting cinnamon in it. Yeah, that's and, what it was. Staging it, it's kind of like doing a chili, but yeah, but you know in a Mexican style, you know. Absolutely. Well, I'm looking forward to biting into those delicious tacos. Birria con queso, right? They're uh, birria queso tacos. So. Birria queso so, tacos. So what they are is, uh, it's, it's essentially, it's a birria quesadilla. But what you got, what makes it very unique from everything else, is that it has the dipping juice, which is, which mm, they, the they call a consume. They call it consume. So it's, it's basically the juice that the meat's cooked in, and then you, you hook it up with some lime, some onion, cilantro, and then you get your quesadilla, you dip it in. Okay. So, so kind of going back to my French techniques, if you will, you know, watching cooking shows, it's kind of similar to the French dip, but Mexican very, style. Very similar to French dip. Yes, it's in a, it's in it's an evolved form of the French dip, per se. You know, it's it's you know us living in Southern California, it's a thing where, um, you know, the, the French dip is just it's something that I didn't mean to insult 70s. you. No, no, no. Not, not. <laughs> I'm just trying to impress you with my cooking, <laughs> my, my French technique no, knowledge, man. <laughs> that's what it is. That's what it is. No, absolutely. And so, and, you know, it's, it's just evolved. And Southern California is such a melting pot of different cultures and foods and everything. Absolutely. So you have this thing that's a quesadilla with birria, and then you dip it like a French dip, and then you eat it at 2 in the morning when you're drunk with your friends outside of the club. Who knows, how, this, how, who knows how long this podcast is going to last, man? We might be... I, I'm looking yeah. forward to taking taking a bite, Saul. Um, I appreciate you being here, man. Taking the time, it's my pleasure. Man. You know, this yeah, is probably yeah. like our third take. I'm gonna be straight up with you because we had some technical difficulties. But Saul, Lucy, Super Sports, thank you guys for being here. Thank you for blessing us with your food, man. I know, you know, as you know, being a chef, I watch enough cooking shows to know, man, that. And you even said it downstairs before we came up here and, and did this. Um, he put his heart and soul into this angler, so. Sapos Tacos. Saul, tell everybody where they can find you online and then where they can get your food, bro. Instagram. Go on Instagram. Sapos Tacos SD. 
It's right there. Look it up. S A P O S underscore T A C O S underscore S D. That's, That's what's where up. We're at. Reach out to us. We are doing catering. We are doing events. We are doing anything that you may need. I mean, even something like this. If you want to feed your five friends at home, hey, I can cater to it. Let's yes. Talk. Hit me up. Let's yeah. Do Let's do it. Especially in these times of, of COVID and, and, you know, more local uh, eateries um, and local businesses that provide food. Man, this is perfect, anglers. You know what I mean? Sapos Tacos, man. Get yourself some tacos. You don't have to go to Taco Bell or anybody else. Anybody, you don't have to go there. <laughs> you don't have to go there. You don't have to go there. Right? Because yeah. you got local businesses, local companies grinding out here, getting made. And I don't know if I explained. Did I explain to you what getting made you is? You did. You did. Right? You did. And that's what Saul's doing. You know, he's getting made. Head down, grinding. Those birria, queso. Birria quesa tacos. Birria quesa tacos. That's what he's doing out here, anglers. So get Sapo Tacos to follow. Just don't follow them. You're going to follow them because I smell the food from up here in the studio, man. So I can't wait to get eating and getting into those Birria tacos. I appreciate you, Saul. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for blessing me with your food, man. Blessing my guests. Golden State Fishing coming up next, anglers. Thank you, man. Anglers, how's it going? My name is Mike, local angler, and your host of the Get Made Show. And if you don't know this guy sitting to the left of me, you should. How's it going, anglers? That's right. Say what's up, man. This is Esteban McDonald. I got to inch you. Like, like, say what's up, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, we we are just great. This is raw anglers, super raw. We got. You, you, let's just thank you for being on the show, oh, bro. Thank you for having me, man. Great. I appreciate it, man. Cheers. Now, Zdrovia, you got a drink. We were talking about that downstairs. Sapos Tacos, thank you. Those are delicious. Delicious, delicious. Wow, yeah. <laughs> man, let me give you a proper introduction, bro. You know, we're, we're stoked right now. I think we're stoked right now. Yeah. All right? <laughs> Anglers, to my left. Golden State Fishing Custom Baits, Mr. Estevan McDonald. Man, Golden State Fishing Custom Baits. If you guys don't know, we're going to get to, you know, know Estevan and his made journey, you know. And, uh, you know, made is a universal term, and it's, uh, you know, I've known Estevan for a little over a year now. Yep. And we've had conversations, and we talk, and we fish together, we shared the water together. And uh, you know, we just broke bread together, and now we're here on the show drinking together, having a, having a beer, and coming together on, on a lot of things. But we have a lot of a, a similar mindset, and we've had some good conversations, good times on the water. And I really wanted Estevan here on the channel on the Get Made Show because he's doing some good things out there, you know, getting us anglers on some fish, man. And I know who he is as a man, as a person, as an angler. And he's just doing the right things. He also has a YouTube channel. So we're going to get into all that, anglers. We're going to get to know Estevan. We're going to get to know Golden State Fishing Custom Baits. And I got to say, man, you roll deep, bro. Yeah, bring the whole family always. Got to. Yeah, right? Like he whole entourage. <laughs> brought the entourage. They're downstairs in the green rooms, you know, probably still munching on those Sapos tacos, they man. Are. They were good, yeah. man. They were really good. Those were really good. Really good. So, you know. Let's just start it off, bro. Let's just kick it off this way. Right. Let's let's talk to the anglers, man. Let's let them know how you came up in the trout game. Like, where did it all start for you? It all started, well, I mean, first trout I ever caught was when I was five years old. That was at uh, Lake Arrowhead, actually. I really didn't know what I was doing. I tied on a little fly and threw it out there and 
It was on, on the, a fly? On the fly. Yeah. Bobber fly? Or yeah. just a fly? It Bobber was just fly? a fly. I think it went out like five feet. <laughs> and I caught a trout. He was probably, oh, I don't know, eight inches maybe. Right. And yeah, took it home. That's so I rad, think it was in the dude. back of the, fridge, the freezer at my parents' house since, I don't know, probably until I was a teenager. And they, finally, <laughs> they finally threw it out. But then, yeah. And then in the 90s, that's when I really got into a, uh, trout fishing at the Spare Lakes. I learned from a couple guys. I know you guys know uh, Mark Ahara. Rest in peace. Uh, he taught me actually in the early '90s how to jig, and it kind of just went off from there. Armando Acevedo too. I gotta put his name out there too. Still fish with him to this day. Been doing 30 years deep, and yeah, wow, 30 name. years, 30 yeah. years. And we're gonna get into that, anglers. You know, if you guys recall, and I want to thank you, Esteban. You kind of chimed in on the comments of that that YouTube show I did. I I, I begged the question: Where did the mini jig come from? What happened? What's that origin? Because it is. Something super unique to, to SoCal, man, and, oh, yeah. and trout, SoCal trout fishing. Right. Um, before we get touch on that, you know, I want to, so it's your first trout's on the fly. Right. What's your PB trout? My PB is a 10-4. That was caught at Sorrel last year. Actually. Double digit club. Double digit club, yep, on a drop shot. Drop shot? Yep, on a Golden State fishing minnow. Golden State fishing minnow. There you have it. So that's your PB, and... You started. How'd you meet Mark? Like, tell me that introduction where you were, where you you were, you're fishing. You threw a fly out there. Didn't didn't really know what you're doing, but you're probably giving that fish the best presentation, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, definitely. And yeah. then from that, you probably did you soak some power bait, night crawlers, uh, like well, like mostly, I, or did you just like, man, what's this mini jig? Well, Boom, after fly. that, I mean, I, I fished a lot of Lake Arrowhead because my grandparents lived right near the water, right there. Okay. So that's where I grew up. Actually, so it was crappie and bass. And then I started fishing at Spare Lakes, and that's when that came around. Yeah, it was throwing bait, you know, throwing power bait. And then I looked over to the right, and there's a bunch of <laughs> Mark and his family over there throwing mini jigs, and they're just pulling in like, you know, I mean, 30, probably an hour each. Wow. Just so, you know, I went over there and I asked him what he was using, and he was nice enough to show me, you know, the technique and everything. And yeah, it just kind of took off from there. My parents bought me my first jigging rod that he made, actually. Oh like, really? Yeah. So your first uh, it was nice custom. Oh yeah, nice custom that I bought specific off the to the technique. Right. Yep. Oh yeah. Awesome. So Hesperia, do you consider that your home lake? Yeah, always has been. I live still mm, five miles from there. So awesome. I've never yeah. fished Hesperia, but we're already making oh, plans. It's a great lake. <laughs> it's, it's a good lake. Yeah, especially now they're getting Mount Lassen, so it's they can put some big ones in there too. So. Okay. Cool. Yeah, Mount Lassen. We we know those are kind of like the prize right now. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, the, the big ones. Without divulging anything, you know, I want some of the anglers to get made. And like myself, I've never been fish Hesperia. And this season, um, you're going to be getting Mount Lassens. So that's that's promising, not DFW. No. So anglers got a chance to go out there and get made. Yeah, it's a private lake. So, yeah, you get they get the good stuff. So. Okay. Oh, so it's private, not just any angler can go private. There. Anybody can go there. You don't have to have a license. Okay. Pay, I see. And fish. I see. Okay, cool. So it's kind of like Dixon. Right. Okay. You just need the permit. Okay. Exactly. So no not membership private. No, no, no oh, okay. membership or like that. No. Okay. Anybody, not city, not city ran, not county ran is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah just uh Parks and Rec does it. Parks and city, Rec, okay. So yeah, you're so you're good. Okay, cool. Awesome. So give some anglers like some specific technique. Like we're gonna be hitting Santee tomorrow right. for the Santee opener. Oh yeah. I'm stoked for that, bro. Oh yeah. Um, and we were talking about that, like, you know, this is, it's, you know, drop shot, you know, Carolina floating, so floating bait or whatever. Mm -hmm. But what are some techniques specific to Hesperia Lake that you could probably, uh, give the anglers to, you know, maybe have a chance? Uh, I would have to say, I mean, jigs always worked really well, but now, uh, now double drop shot is working really, really well there now because the, the water clarity is a little dark. So that slower technique really works really well. So the double drop shot, that's everybody's just killing on that. Okay, cool. Double drop shot. I haven't tried that yet, but I definitely want to. Awesome. So double drop drop shot his spare leg. Maybe similar to Santee. Yeah. Right? With the oh, yeah. it, can we call it slower type of fishing? Slower type, definitely. More yeah. finesse. More finesse gives the trout more time to see it, you know, not just fly right by him. Is it more because of the, the, the water zone. quality? Yeah, definitely water quality. But yeah, no, it, it works really, really well there. So, I mean. All right, cool. So, Hesperia Lake, home lake, double drop shot, a little more finesse. Yeah. Right? Cool. There you go, anglers. Esteban, his home lake. How long have you been fishing Hesperia Lake? You uh, said 30 years? Yeah. It was 1990. Yeah. 30 years, and you might not even have thought of the double drop shot, you know, but 
you know, it's just the water cl clarity, which is awesome. It's it's awesome that you say that. And the reason I asked that is because Santee is the same thing. Yeah. Water clarity. Yeah. So. Anytime there's like water like that, that's dark or, you know, hard to see in, visible, something slower is always better. You want you know, the slowest possible thing so the fish can see it and it doesn't just fly right by them. And they're like, where'd it go? Right. Right. Cool. So Sparrow Lake ran into Mark jigging the technique, the style. What was so, what, was it new then? Was it, yeah. I mean, mini jigs, because Crappy John. Yeah. Right? right. And then so mini jigs are now circulating early right. 90s. Yep. Right? Right. And you met Mark. Yeah. Mark, Mark just, nobody really in the Spirit Lake especially ever even seen a crappie jig. I mean, we've seen them, but we didn't know we could use those for trout. You know I mean, we didn't know the ultralight rods with a two pound test and all that. He brought us all into that. I mean, Daiwa and using Shimano and his custom wrap rods. I mean, they to this day are like gold. That's like a samurai sword from, you know, I mean, something you can't get anymore from him. Right. Unfortunately, right. my friend Ar Armando, he holds like, I think, 10 or 15 of those. So. Really? Yeah, I had a couple. Unfortunately, they got stolen from me. So yeah, it's, I'll never get that back. But Oh, that's a bummer, man. Yeah. And now uh, his friend, though, uh, our friend James, though, makes a uh, juicy beaver rods and that is the M okay yeah. yeah the mk yeah that's mark ahara that's why it says mk on those the legend rod those are those are Aha. basically see mark i like Ahara's design just yeah now he makes them so yeah. i like those little just nuances yeah you know those 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 tributes those like right you know it's an ode to mark you know right. I mean? oh yeah yeah because i mean james learned a lot from him so that's why it's I mean, a lot of guys just put all their intel in and did exactly how Mark would do it. Even the colors that you get uh, the Juicy Beavers from, that is actually Mark's, uh, his his colors that he used for his personal rods. Brown, orange, and white? Black, no. black, orange, and it's, white? No, on his, it's the black with the blue. It's got like, oh, blue, okay. like a cobalt okay. blue on there. Yeah. This is the logo's orange and Yeah, the logo. Yeah, Juicy that's, that's Juicy Beaver. That's that's James's logo. Okay, but, yeah. cool, cool. Yeah. Awesome, man. Now... What was the what was it about the technique? Like, have you taken the years to perfect your own jigging style technique? And is it the same for for a minnow for you? Is it the same for a mini jig for you? Uh, mini jigs and minnows. If I'm doing a ball head on, on a minnow, yeah, pretty close, same speeds usually. It all depends though too on the water clarity. Right. I mean, I'll slow it down in local lakes around here. In the Sierras, I might speed it up a little bit, but just depending on that. Why? Why in the Sierra you're gonna speed it up a little bit? Cause clarity. That's the water is so clear up there that the fish definitely see. You know they're seeing it. And they're chasing. And it. they're chasing it. And they're aggressive usually. So about yeah. and I, I, if you fish long enough, anglers, and you have that time on the water, you you might have seen this. But if the water's clear and you're, you know, casting, you know, over here, right, Esteban? Yeah. And you got that range. Have you seen a trout? Have you moved a trout? More than 10 yards, 15 yards, and oh. come chasing your bait, right? Oh, yeah, up in that water clarity up there for sure. You can see them flying in at 30 yards, even. I mean, they can see it that far. You it's awesome, it. anglers. If you haven't seen yeah. it, it's, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's when you hold their breath right when they're coming up. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Try exactly. not to pull it too early. <laughs> exactly. Cool. So um, what what is something that, you know, thank you for sharing Mark's legacy and his influence on the, the Southern California trout fishing culture. Um, I never had a chance to, to meet him. You know, I'm, you know, I'm new, I'm fairly new in the game anglers. You know what I mean? Being in the Navy and, and, and being in LA, uh, Los Angeles and this kind of originated, you know, San Bernardino Riverside and coming down. But, um, what's some, what's, what's some advice, man, when it comes to mini jigging, the style of the technique that you could give anglers, man, that's going to help them catch more fish besides patience. Yeah, well, yeah, definitely patience, number one. But besides that, I would say just uh, try to keep it slow. Well, main, the main thing that people usually do wrong is speed too fast. You know what I mean? They're trying to pull in as fast as possible. Slow is always better. I'm guilty you, of it. Yeah, exactly. You can go too fast. You really can't go too slow. You I'll gotta, tell you, you what, those, remember that. those tiger trout in Utah, bro, they wanted it fast. <laughs> yeah, some, some, they do. They do Dude, sometimes. But they they yeah. definitely did. When the bite is slow, you definitely you know just slow everything down. and For sure. That's great yeah. advice because I catch myself – you know, casting and, and my 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 cadence is nice and, and on. Right. But then I'm still I'm really in fast because I'm anxious to I'm anxious to get a bite. Right. But, and then if I'm not going to get a bite, I'm anxious to get it back in to get it back out. That's the thing, too. Yeah. If it's really slow, people do. They'll really speed it up. Then you know, what I mean, all day they've been out there without a bite and they're just going fast, really fast. And right. Fast. If you slow it down a little you bit, you think you're covering water. Right. But you're you're. Yeah. It's counterproductive it's, what you're trying to do, especially right. if the conditions of the lake you're saying. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Awesome. So, 
when did you decide you know and we talked before and, and anglers I, I mentioned this the last episode and you guys know getting made you know on and off the water it doesn't matter and part of getting made i wanted to show with these podcasts and having awesome guests on that have that are not just you know in, innovative in, in in your own sense but you're creative man and you have a passion so i want to be able to inspire other anglers that that might want to take that step and to create something um to leave their own legacy right. you know here in socal and the trout fishing world so i know that was just super long bro so i'm gonna give you the direct <laughs> question um can you tell the anglers how golden state fishing came about and what inspired you to start dipping and pouring uh shooting it happened you know, about a year, two years ago actually i started getting back into i mean i was been fishing this whole time but not every weekend you know what i mean like i used to i started getting back into it and getting the passion and you know I knew I always what I wanted in jigs and minnows and all that stuff, but it wasn't out there really exactly how I wanted it. So I started, you know, messing around, just trying to do stuff for myself and for my girl and to fish with. And then it just blossomed from there. And yeah, I guess, I don't know. Yeah. It, just, no, it, it, worked, it worked out really well. Yeah. What's cool is when you build these relationships, you actually get to, you know, um, we talk, but you know, we, we're also, we get to see each other grow from far apart. And I could say that I've seen you, you grow, Yeah. you know what I mean? And, um, the community is awesome to be able to, you know, uh, gravitate to your product, man. And, and, and whatever, you don't have to divulge your secret, super secrets, but you said you were looking for something different that wasn't out there or that maybe it was, you know, just not out there or out there. It doesn't matter, but what you wanted, you know what I mean? Right. And it's kind of the same thing with me, you know, starting the YouTube, I saw a lot of what I liked, a lot of different anglers, I just didn't see this, what you guys, what you anglers are seeing now. This is what I've had in my head. Is that kind of the same thing, making baits? Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, I just, I mean, I just, colors and combinations came in my head, and I was like, all right, well, let's give it a try. And I got, I got better and better at it, and I guess it just, yeah, it progressed a lot really quickly, actually. <laughs> how, how hard is it to make mini jigs? It's not real hard. I mean, it's, it's, it costs money. That's the one thing. I mean, it definitely, to get into it, you, I've put in thousands and thousands and thousands into this, but, you know, I mean, it's, what you got to do some on some of the stuff. I mean, you could do it cheaply for yourself, but you want to go big. You know what I mean? It mm -hmm. starts to cost a lot of money, definitely. But absolutely, absolutely. What's your favorite color that you make? My favorite, all time favorite color. Color. Oh wow, I can put a spot on that one. I am. Uh, <laughs> I uh, mean, it's it's like a rapper, you know. Hey, yeah. What's your favorite song? Yeah, it all depends. Do you remember I mean, the lyrics, Estevan? Yeah, see, it all Do depends. Do you remember though. the lyrics to your banger? Yeah, see, it, <laughs> it all depends, you know, exactly. Like, but uh, watercolor, I mean, I'd probably have, like, a SoCal color that I like. So something saying. like with okay. black or something like that for so, down here. And then, so, okay, let, let, let's, 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 let me narrow it down then. All right, we love the Sierra. We Sierra bound. Oh, yeah. Favorite color for the Eastern Sierra? Uh, Something with brown i have a root beer one that i make actually and that one that one you works do. really really well and the rainbow the rainbow mini jig you know he got the big cutthroat off of that one i did and yeah. you know i just gotta say um this year this year's been like time on the water anglers you know putting in the year this you know third year going into trout made more time on the water last season and this year more time on the water and i've been rewarded and just so happened, thinking about this episode and talking what I wanted to talk to Esteban about, I've had some really nice fish, man, this year. Really nice, you know, catches. And my three, I would say my top three catches this year, brother. My nine at Dixon on your minnow, right? The Cuddy at June on the Baby Rainbow mini jig. Yep. And then I got a new species, Tiger Trout. On the Black Galaxy minnow. Yeah. That's just so, cool. three, um, and two of them were brand new trout species to me, man. So, you know, it's, I gravitated to, to your product as a customer because I love the Golden State. Yeah. California. That's, that's what I wanted to keep it. That's why I came up with the name. I wanted to keep it California based. You know what I mean? I mean, it's going to, it's already branching out. I'm going to have sales all over the place, but. Nice. So you yeah. have sales out of state? Oh, yeah. Orders out, out of state. state? A lot of Northern California, though, of course. And I mean, the Sierras are all blowing me up. And, but yeah, it's, it's really, it's moving quick. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Yeah. It's, um, it's pretty cool, man. So, you know, uh, Golden State Fishing, uh, your craft, bro, will always have 
a place on my mantle, bro. No <laughs> pun, literally, dude. I'm going to get those fish mounted, and I'm going to put the bait right in that freaking mouth, and that's where it's going to hang. Oh, thank you. That is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, man. I'm, it's going to be up on the wall next time. I'm going to try. I'm glad I get in the net to cut it, at least. Yeah, you I did. I was there for that you one did. live. So that, that was, was sick, yeah, man. Yeah. That was sick. It's... um. We'll talk about that another day, dude. That's about, you know, it, it, that's about me. You know, I want to focus on you, but you were the net, man. Thank you. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, you. Thank you. You got that fish. That was all you. Man, it was awesome. It was stoked, dude. And it was crazy. I turned around like a lot of people just on the shoreline. It was just like, <laughs> yeah. Cheering it's like man, what you catching on? I'm like, yeah. uh, this guy will tell you, <laughs> you know, this guy will tell you what I caught it on. So, so Golden State Fishing, how'd you come up with the name? Was it just a love for California? Yeah, I love for California. I mean, there's a lot of even companies out there that do Golden State. You see Golden State, even, a lot of things, but you know, right. I didn't see it fishing yet, and I did all that. I got the fictitious name and yeah. all that done, all the legal did, stuff Did you done. do diligence? Oh, yeah. Are you a Warriors fan, Golden State Warriors? I am not a Warriors no, fan. No, I am a the, Lakers fan. I know you're a Lakers fan. That's Born. a trick question. I even question. have Lakers right there. That's the Kobe? Yeah, there's some Kobe Lakers minnows right, right. there. Uh, speaking of that, dude, I don't know what – Huber. All right, anglers. So I ordered. I put in a nice order for for the season. Sharing the stoke, passing out some of your minnows. The homies, they love them. Um, all last season, and you know, again, you know, like I said in some of the other videos, my stocks. This trout season, I look at my box, man. I, I could survive out there, but <laughs> I bet. it's getting kind of skimpy. It's getting kind of low. So um, I, I I put my order in and. I think you like, hey, did you get it? Because <laughs> I didn't yeah. like post it, you know, like, oh, I got it, you oh, know, because yeah. I, I wanted to save it for an unboxing or unpackaging or mail call, made mail. I don't know, dude. I'm playing with the name. Oh, so yeah. I like it. I don't it's know, old. you know, what I'm going to call it, the segment, the series or what have you. But I, I did three of them, you know, today. Uh, I, I film ahead of time and all that and then right. edit. But I came to yours, bro, and I'm like, you know what would be dope? Oh, just rip it over Do right it. Here. Right on the freaking air with you, dude. Right here to see what I got. I don't even remember what I ordered, but instead of having your website in front of me, you're gonna we're gonna talk about a couple things. I want to talk about some of the colors I ordered and some of the new stuff that you got going on right now. You know what I mean? And we'll talk about that. So, you know, I, I love the minnows. Um. Oh. Yeah, those are, those are still oh. together. Yeah. Oh, that's, ex that's extra. Oh, yeah. Those, those come in. Oh, that's a little baby worm. Yeah. The little it's baby little worm. Little inchworms okay. we make now. Those things are dope. Taken out dope. too. And then, oh, little inchworms. Another one. Yep. yep. Inchworms again. Yep. Cool. And then, oh, yep. There's some jigs there's, in there for you. There's yeah. that. Yeah. There's that's that the, baby rainbow, right? No, that's the pearl. The oh. pearl, pearl gold and uh, brown. Oh, the okay. One make, yeah. Oh, thank that's, you. That one's oh. definitely going to be a Sierra good one. Yeah, it looks like it. Little worms, worms. Yep, got those mini jigs. All right, cool. So I love the minnows. Yep. Right. I'm going to do grasshopper. Yeah. That's I got a, a, a baby brown trout right there. Baby brown trout. Here's that root beer. Yep, that's the root beer right there. We made it in, in the jig also. That's the root beer in the jig. Now, yep. the same colors in the, making the minnows, you making the jig as well? No, only a couple. No, only, there's only a few that, okay. have, that have the same, yeah. So, cool. Man, you guys got to check out the website. Everything's on here. Um, I want to... One thing that's that's new. Let's talk about the baby worms, uh -huh. and then I want to talk about your ball heads. Ball man. heads, yeah. of course. You know what I mean. Oh, yeah. I know that's something. Like I said, I've been seeing you grow, man, and this is awesome. So tell me about the baby worms. Why do baby worms? Uh, something just even more finesse. They come with a uh, one thirty second heads all in there too. There's a little three pack that comes in there with uh, ten worms, but it's just something that's super finesse. Me and my nephew took them up to Green Valley Lake, and we did really, really well on them. They were awesome. just on fire. But, yeah, it's just something even lighter and even less than a jig. For right. Those really finesse days, even like in the Sierras where, you know, you're throwing a jig, and you'll see it, the trout kind of looking at it, but you know, they don't want it. Mm -hmm. want something really small. A little like, smaller. There you yeah. go. Yeah. That's why fly fishing. Yeah, exactly. Because, you know, big big, big fish will eat small oh, things. for English. sure. Now, how would this be? This nice little, uh, even, you know, like a little wacky. On yeah. a drop shot, even you think? yeah, oh yeah, on a drop shot, even too, yeah, or just you mean even uh, hooking it normal, even too, yeah, but something on the finesse days on drop shot for sure. Dude, I'm loving the ball heads. Now you powder, you're doing these powder oh, yeah. coating them yourself. Yeah, oh yeah, we make them and powder coat them ourselves. We do everything. 
on that. My nephew actually is taking over a lot of that now too, so I got to give him some props out there. My nephew Andrew, he is putting in a lot of work on those. Right on. They look good. Yeah, no, they're they coming up great. pretty good. They look great. What colors? Do you have any new colors for this season that for, you just came up with for this season? That you'd like to like you know promote or like. There's you know, everybody one. asks me, man, like, you know, yeah. I, I send a lot of people your way. Right. I mean. You know, and, and you know, I always say the, the man, anglers, look at, man, I was, this is Christmas again. <laughs> I got all this. Man, I can't wait to use it. I, I wanted, I had to open it, bro, because I wanted to fish them. So it's I like, know. I was like the last couple of times I got skunked, but it didn't matter what freaking I was throwing, bro. Yeah. But, um, but I'm glad, place. I'm glad I got them. I'm glad I'm able to oh, yeah. open them up. Right here with you. Got the slap. And I appreciate it, man. I can't oh, wait yeah. to put them to work. You know I'm going to put them to work, too. Oh, I know. You can try some out tomorrow, actually. Yeah, yeah. So, um, thank you, man. I wanted to open that Anglers. I, I hope you enjoyed that. Dude, it's like you could have brought it to me instead <laughs> of mailing it. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's better that way. Dude, hey, yeah, it cool, works man. out, man. It's like yeah. it's like opening up the chocolate bar in front of Ooh, Willy Wonka, bro. You're better than I am. I couldn't hold on, though. I know. I wanted to. I still <laughs> have some left, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know. Yeah. All I needed was that Black Galaxy. You, you pull out some old ones. Even I saw in your video in uh, Utah there. I was like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did. I did. That, that's awesome. You know, you, you have, I have, you know, the last time I loaded up was last season. So, yeah. yeah. You know, there's another uh, nice order like this one. So, um, what do you got going on, man? What What's new? What's, um, you just, it just looks like you're just cranking them out, man. That's it. Yeah, we're just trying to crank out our colors. We've pretty much got the colors we want now, and now we're just going to kind of stick to those. You know, we've done some other ones, and we kind of let them go, but now we're just picking out our best ones to keep. Okay. And how many you think you're gonna come down? You so you just want like a stock color set? Uh, yeah, just a basic. I mean, we do like uh, I want to say fifteen to twenty jigs, and probably same thing with minnows. Just kind of keep it in there. You don't want like thousands of different colors. Right. It gets too confusing for anglers, and then you've got too many that look the exact same. Yeah. So absolutely, you know I mean? absolutely. We, I can definitely. We try to keep that. ours in stock too. I mean, I mean, we constantly keep at least a couple thousand of each color always in stock. We don't. There's no waiting on us or any right. downtime or anything like that. Let, let me ask you this, man. I mean, people see the package. They get the package. What was it? How much? How many time? How many hours a day, man? What kind of work are you putting in? A lot of time. A lot of time. The last couple months, it's been at least two, three day, uh, days a week, sometimes uh, morning till night. I mean, I mean, my nephew has been out there all all day, all night doing that. Even when I work, I work 40 to 50 hours a week. So you have a still, full-time job. I do. And I still come home and still do that. I mean, you gotta, that's what you got to do. I mean, if you really want, you mean, you want something in life, you got to push it all the way. You have to. That's what getting made is, man. Oh, yeah. On the water, off the water. You have the motivation, bro. You took action. You're staying determined, bro. And you're creating freaking experience for us, man. Oh, yeah. Seriously, that, that's, that's what it's about. It's the whole experience, man. It's like, what'd you catch it on? Man, it doesn't matter really bro you know what i mean like it, what i love is like you've never like forced me to to post or to fish or oh, yeah. to anything you know i believe in having different types of baits in your arsenal um oh yeah because you you never know you know what i mean and you know i just gotta say bro you make some some of the ones that that i, I like i love mm -hmm. fishing right good quality strong baits i reuse I think that's why I haven't re up, bro. So I, I didn't want to go another year without supporting yeah. you. But I think, honestly, man, that's why I haven't re up, but I wanted to re up because I know your craft has gotten better from last year. Oh, yeah. We're, you know, we jumped some stuff. But yeah, no, that's the thing is quality is what we always want. We're not trying to, you know, make people buy them every week or something. We want them to last. You'd be able to catch. 20 fish off each minnow maybe or something maybe something like that unless it's they got teeth bro yeah they would chop yeah I mean it, right dude yeah but it's 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 for real when I say that you got quality stuff thank you I reuse them I'm like I'm rough on on you know and they, I got the not super thick hook keepers but you know the other hook keep bait keepers yeah not hook keep bait keeper right and man I just like slide it on slide it off changing colors seamlessly um, I think my favorite color of yours is the baby rainbow. Baby rainbow, yeah, that's 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 a good one always. I love the, you know, it's uh, -huh. uh 
I don't know, man. I, I can't even remember if I like. I think I just picked it out. I just like that it had a rainbow, and I thought like, I think a cut cutty will eat this. I think a cutthroat will eat this. You yeah, know what I mean? Definitely. And um, but anglers, I know some of you who who might be fishing Golden State fishing products, baits, custom baits. Do you take custom orders? I do. I do definitely do custom orders. Um, as long as you buy enough of them, depends on you know I mean what what you're trying to go after. But yeah, I will make you. Tell me what it is. I'll make it happen some way, one way or another. Nice, dude. Yeah, I'm nice. pretty good at, at the color match thing, so I got it down, I think. <laughs> okay. And there's, and, and I, you're saying you're going to break down to certain colors. You think that focusing on certain colors because they're already proven is, is um, how, how are you still going di- to differentiate yourself if, if you're, because it is a lot, man. Yeah. to do a lot of different colors it is it is that's what i said you don't want to venture out too much there's the ones that are going to work SoCal, i mean in those dirty waters like santee or sparia the blacks stuff like that work mm-hmm. really really well you can do little variations like that but i mean those always work the best yeah and that's what i love it's like you said variations it's your spin right it's other guys spin. make minnows oh yeah lots do but you can tell golden state fishings from any everybody else's yeah. your color schemes your patterns inside the colors, the way your flake is. It's weird, bro. It's, right. it's and, your, it is, and man. I, you can really tell. And I show, uh, personally, I mean, a lot of people just whip these out. I, I will catch fish on every single one of them. You'll see on the YouTube video, I've caught fish on just about every one of them. Dude, thanks I for prove, me. I prove they work, not just you know, whip them out. Cool. That, dude, thanks for reminding me. It's about getting made. You know, whether you want to make baits and you want to take that step, Cool. But maybe you want to do the other flip side and do something that I'm doing it. And Esteban's doing both. Yeah. He's running also running a YouTube channel. So that's awesome. That's um, kind of how like, you know, we kind of I ran into you or discovered Golden State Fishing was YouTube. Um, I watch YouTube and I like watching other trout anglers and you know, you gotta know. And I like knowing who's out there, you know, like who's coming up. And I came across your videos, started following you on Instagram, made an order. And here we are. So, um, YouTube's tough too, man. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But why you, YouTube is just for you. Do you use it just to showcase your products? Uh, but it started off as my, just showing my fishing. I mean, kind of like yeah. you did and everything. But then after I started doing the baits, I was like, well, yeah, here's a perfect opportunity to show, you know, what they can do. That's awesome, man. And I do watch them. You cast some big fish, bro. I, I try. I mean, I've been doing it for a while, so I, uh, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully pull out some. But, yeah. You'll pull up some. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot, of time, some. a lot of time on the water. That's all it comes down to is if you really you mean, want to catch big fish, you got to get out there and cast. Yeah. you got to grind out those bad days where it's you might not even get a bite all day. At the end of the day, it might be the last one, like when I caught my 10-4. Yeah. We had a group of people with us, and we all were about to get skunked at Sorrel. We kept going. I mean, a couple of people even left and went home, but I we stayed and stayed. I stayed all the way to almost uh, the sun went down, and bang, mm-hmm. right before the sun went down, caught that 10 4. 10 4. And if you guys haven't seen the video, what was the only bite I got in June Lake that day of the opener, Esteban? Uh, the cutty? The only bite, right? I think, yeah. You guys were, they were fishing all around me. Oh, I, didn't yeah. have, I didn't even have a nibble. Yeah. <laughs> and, the, and then it was in the afternoon. It wasn't the end of the day, but it was that one bite. All right. You know what I mean? So. Time on the water, you know, keep casting. Jesse Warpaint Customs, that's what he tells me, man. I want to quit sometimes, bro. I mean, we we gets that the way, oh, right? Yeah, yeah like, it gets aggravated and you get discouraged. Discouraged, yep. You know, and he's just like, keep casting, keep casting. That's it. Like, yeah. you might get, you might not get that trophy, but you might get not get skunked. But you never, yeah, that next cast might have been the one. It's like a slot machine. You get off it too early and the next person behind you might get the jackpot. That's what I always say, bro. That's yeah. my, like, yeah. I don't know if I told you, but that's like my analogy I use, the jackpot, man. Right. Like you're sitting at that slot machine. You got to put your coins in, mm-hmm. put your coins in. That baby will pop sometime. Exactly. That baby will pop sometime. So, man, what else did I want to talk with you? We talked about the mini jigging. Mark, man, I know you wanted to, to you know, touch on that and, and, you know, keep that memory, that legacy alive and, it's good to just know the name, Anglers. Oh, yeah. Mark Ahara. You definitely got to remember Mark that one. Mark Ahara. Yeah. That way, you know where, you know, what, you got to know what you, you're doing on the water. You got, you like, you wear a t-shirt, you got to know where it's, what it, what's that company's about. Right. Yep. You know what I mean? And it's just like, it's good to know some of that culture, some of that history here in Southern California. I'm going to give you this, the floor right now, bro. I don't know, man. We, we, I got some things that, you know, we just, we're going to just be here, talk bullshit whatever man um but 
Um, I want. I let's do this, man. What's one piece of advice, general trout fishing, that you could give anglers? Not just about your baits or how to work your baits. This is just universal. It could be super generic, man. It probably will be, but it's probably the simplest things that we forget. Yeah, it's, to focus on the all simplicities. I mean, you got to break everything down in trout fishing or any fishing. I mean, from the line you're using to your knot. That's how I've always been: is making sure every single knot is perfect. I've, I don't know how many times I've cut my bait even off just to retie it ten times to make sure it swam perfect. I mean, just all the little steps like that. That's you've got. So it's do just that. not the. So check this out, anglers. He's saying it's just not the knot that you tie, but the way it's sitting on the eye of the the Ex jig, exactly. yeah. and the way it's going to pull, yep, and bounce and do everything. Just the little details like that. I don't. Man, remember. that is super detailed. I remember being a little kid. And I mean, even taking my line off because it was curled. And I mean, brand new line, rip it all off, start over. That's funny, bro. I didn't do it right. I, I, mean, I have yeah. I have a whole bag of <laughs> of minnows that weren't swimming right. I was going to send oh, back yeah. to you, bro. No. <laughs> Yeah, but it was me. Uh, I didn't have it on right, or, right? You know, or just simple. It was on the. It was hooked right, but yep. That it, you know, you're you know anglers, and you know what I'm saying is you're jigging it in, and it's you're not getting that bounce. It's like might kick to the side. It might kick mm -hmm. this way. You know, just like sideways a little bit. So you got to adjust that. What? And you use uh, braid to mono, braid to fluoro. Uh, fluoro. No, yeah. Braid to fluoro. Yeah. I've been going back and forth though. That's Seeger, right? Yeah, Seeger. That's that's a really good leader line. I remember you one. sent me that pit. You sent me the the line. Oh, yeah. I haven't got it yet. Super strong, super uh, limp. You know what I mean? It stays real nice and straight. No memory on it. It's really good. Awesome. Leader you line said for it was. Sure. Yeah, you said it was for uh, Esteban recommended it specifically because um, it's easier to tie it, the it, connection knot. Yeah, the connection knot's easier, especially using. I recommend four pound. So you're already using the, you know, the braid's really strong. And if you use two pound, I mean, you can use two pound, but then you know, all that stretch is going to be in that little bit of two pound. So you might yeah. break off on a big one one day. You yeah, don't really want to do that. True. So you might as well go with the four pound leader. It'll make no dis yeah. no difference on your cast or anything like that. Yeah. And that's where you got to remember anglers. Cause that like Esteban saying is you have two pound mono, you'll get that stretch. Mm. Right. But if you have two pound fluoro, fluoro does not stretch. Yeah. Okay. Not so much. that's why the four pound fluoro. Right. Right, if you're gonna use fluoro on your connection, your braid, four pound fluoro because it's gonna make up for that stretch with the strength. Of oh it. yeah, yep. right, right. Man, what kind of knot do you tie for your connection knot? Uh, Albright knot. That's I like that one. It's a little difficult sometimes and frustrating. We all know, especially out in the wind in or the wind. cold. Yeah, that's my worst. I'm like, I already yeah. have the shakes, dude. Yeah. Like I have this d disease. Yep. It's benign. Don't worry, I'm not gonna die. But it's hereditary, and I shake already. So you're in the cold, and you got thin line. You can't feel the line at all, mm -hmm. and you got to tie this knot with like 15 wraps up, 15 wraps <laughs> exactly, down, yeah. and it's like I know you're 50 mile an hour winds. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've gone in like porta potties to do it or something. Right. Like, whatever you got to do, go to the car. You just or, sit yeah. down, and you stay stand. I'm just none of my business. Bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah tie the night before. You got to do whatever you got to right? do. Yeah. yeah, practice at home. That's what you guys got to do. Though it's the best thing. Practice makes perfect. So. Cool. So, practice makes perfect and simplicity. You know, taking it down to breaking it down to the smallest level, and you know, if your 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 jig's not swimming, you might you know you can have all the gear, think you you know doing it, but you know you gotta look at it le even a little bit more. Yeah. Is what you're saying? Yeah, little details. We've all had those days where. You're throwing the same thing as the guy next to you, but he's just tearing it up. Yeah. And, I mean, you're doing trying to match his speed, everything. It's but it's all those little details that comes down to you. That's what it is. Absolutely. It's funny you mentioned that because when we were in the Sierra, um, I always watch other anglers, see how they work it. I think I could learn. And that's funny. I was watching you, and I was matching your speed. And that's what I kept with with, with the rest of the day. So it's all those little details, yeah. anglers, that, you know, you're going to dial it in, I promise. Oh, but yeah. what's it going to take to dial it in? Just time on the water. <laughs> time on the water, yeah. Fish as much, often, everywhere you can. Just try to get all the experience you can. That's all I can say. Absolutely. What are you looking forward to this SoCal trout season, Esteban? This SoCal trout season? I mean, this is probably our biggest, our, we're starting to get big now, you know what I mean? So it's our full year, I guess, our first full year. Okay. So hopefully, I mean, everything just goes off really right. Uh, so you're correct, just ending, ending your first year and you're going on to your first full. Full, yeah, basically full year, right, exactly. And right. on the scene, known, mm -hmm. almost a household name. 
At least in my house, your household <laughs> name, bro. You know. <laughs> well, thank you, man. Absolutely, absolutely. So, um, just looking forward to you know, I, I'm looking forward to seeing some anglers trying out Golden State fishing, uh, some of their products, their minnows, mini jigs, um, along with uh, others out there. You know, it's try them all. Oh, yeah. You know, it's try all. Everything. You know, it's it's try them all. Right. You know, and, and have that rotation. You got to have that rotation. Um, what do you got for the anglers, man? You got anything? You got uh, any surprises? Well, one thing I do got to do is a shout out to my parents, actually. That is a big thing. Wow. Why I am what I am and why I know how to fish. I'm trying to get emotional here, but my dad actually died like uh, seven months ago. And he was a big, big Sorry thing. Oh, uh, yeah. He was a big thing about it. He'd take me to Spear Lakes every single morning. He'd wake up at three in the morning just to drop me out, take me there. He didn't always stay, and he wasn't that much into fishing, but he made sure I was there, gave me the money, bought the rods. Even I mean, it would be his last twenty. He would do whatever he had to do to make sure. I mean, and that was like the last thing I talked to him about was this company, and that's the last thing he wanted me to do was go really big with this. So, wow, dude, <laughs> you got me all teared up, bro, because I know those moments, man, and I know. You know, there's a lot behind what we do, anglers, and why we're doing it. It's not about money. I, I yeah. You it's know, not. everybody says it, but we can't no. seriously like yeah. we can't stress it enough, man. You know, it's not about that. It's about mm-hmm. our, our dad that passed away that said, "Hey, man, make this happen," and that's what we're holding. That's what Esteban's holding on to oh, yeah. to get made. Oh yeah, and go to state fishing, oh, man. I'm and, not gonna stop. Don't you worry. Right. That's your. That's, that's what we call your why. Drives me. I can hear him in my ear every day. So you know, that's what I wake up. I get home from work. I'm tired. I just want to sit and watch TV, but instead I grind baits out. Like, Here's so your that's dad, what I'm going to do. Thank you, man. Man, that's what's up, dude. Getting made. That's what getting made is all about, man. That's why I'm happy I have this platform, dude, so you can tell your story. And I think that's what makes a brand, anglers. When you're trying to create something, positive and create something that has an influence that can have an influence on somebody oh, yeah. inspire somebody right make a memory for somebody yeah um you gotta go after it you gotta do you gotta do it that's like me i mean i do i mean it's not the money that much for me nothing makes me happier than watching people catch on my stuff that's that's it right there that's that's my high right there always it does feel good I made my own mini jigs. You know that. Oh, yeah. It was, it was pretty hard. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's hard. Yeah, it is. It's it's things you just like. Nah, maybe I don't know. Maybe we'll do a how to make a mini jig. There you go. I don't know, but it's um, it's awesome. Anglers seeing the progression, seeing. Uh, that's what I was gonna say, man. I lost my train of thought. We're just raw. I was saying like I lost seriously lost my train of thought. You had me all choked up about your dad, bro. <laughs> And, and that story, man, that's so inspirational to me, dude. You know what I mean? So it's like, you got your why. You know, we all have our wise angler, anglers, and it's about creating that brand. You know what I mean? So when you create the brand, a brand is a story. That's why you buy McDonald's, because there's a story behind it. Yep. Right? Ronald McDonald. McBurglar. Right? Mm-hmm. Stupid example, bro. I'm sorry, bro. But it is. <laughs> that's what makes a brand it is does. the story, no, it man. Does. It is. So my point is I want to thank you for coming on the show, Esteban. Oh, thank you very much. Um, for uh, sharing your story with us, the anglers. I hope uh, you inspired some uh, someone out there to take yeah. a step in, in, in whether it's uh, YouTube, um, editing, filming, getting in front of the camera, or, you know, getting – you know, in front of some plastic and, and shooting some baits, yeah. pouring some baits, whatever it might be. Yeah. Um, or, you know, it, it might be something completely unrelated to fishing that they just heard your story. Oh, yeah. And they're going to go take action and do that. So um, we're going to start to wrap it up. Yeah. But you got anything? Uh, I think we covered a lot of it. And I'm, uh, Also, here's your hat, though. You got to support that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, brother. Yeah, no problem. I appreciate man. Thank you, you, bro. Going to stay fishing. Thanks for having me on the show. This no, is really absolutely, awesome. man. This is definitely going to be on the wardrobe. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. No problem. Um, I think that's the we. That's it. I think that's all we got, anglers. Just go out there and grind. That's all I can say. Go out there, Cast grind, away. Cast. Over and over and over water. and over. Yep, that's it. 
That's it. Cool. Well, I appreciate you, Esteban. All right, gentlemen. You know what? Let everybody know one more time, if you have it, where they can find you online. You can find us on Instagram, lo- whatever. Uh, online, uh, www.goldenstatefishing.shop. So just go on there. Yep. And you'll see everything you need on there. There's these, also um, a licensed guide. That's information's on there also for you. That is so, another thing. I yeah. If about you that. want, if you want to learn how to jig, take the guesswork out. I mean, I could come out. We can get it going for you real quick. Skip a lot of steps. That's awesome, man. You know, and you know, not only, you know, if you guys anglers don't know, I have my guide license as well, so I understand that feeling. You know, you getting someone, you know, uh, made on your baits. You know, you being able to you know direct somebody coach somebody Mm -hmm. into and you don't even have a rod it's like you're like like blind kind of you know what i mean you're not casting or nothing and when they hook up yeah that's an awesome feeling too man definitely i want you guys to check out esteban please check out golden state fishing custom baits check out his guide service this is a good man doing good things got a good family around him got a good crew around him they're all downstairs hanging out <laughs> eating that eating all our food eating all our food man oh I, I, i'm glad we had a bite uh, me too yeah we were talking about, about that eating right after and we're like yeah man, get something dude, out of that yeah. so um thank you esteban oh thank you for I, having me thank i you. appreciate you bro we're gonna go tear it up at santita to tomorrow oh yeah you got your rain gear i do i know i see the rain but hey I'll, regardless we'll be out there <laughs> that's it we'll be out there man anglers Golden State Fishing. Everything's down below in the comments. If you're new to the Get May Show and this is your first introduction to it, this is our second guest on the Get May Show ever. Dang. Thanks again, bro. Thank I'm you. Like, Thank you, man. We're good friends, man. Good so times. it's like good times. Yeah, real good times. Having fun. We're gonna have a little bit more good times, but oh, thank yeah. you, anglers, for tuning in. Thank you for smashing that play button. Go ahead, give us a like. Give us a subscribe if you haven't. This is the only trout, specific trout fishing podcast in Southern California. In my, I don't know even, man, I'm a clean, I don't know if I'm right or not. Uh, I think you're not, I mean, well. If, I don't know. If but, there's something else, it's not, you're not you. Cause oh, man, I appreciate that. Everybody's you. This is the norm, anglers. I want to have more guests on here. And, you know, I'm hitting up some quality dudes that, that, that they're doing some quality things out there for the community and um man i'm just stoked dude thanks again Thank we're gonna you. take it out right here my name is mike what's your name bro Esteban, golden state fishing rest what's up this is again main show i'm a local angler and your host trout made we out golden state fishing here gsf custom baits just got done doing the trout made show it is a must let me tell you guys, it's a great show. Just want to do another shout out though to my girlfriend, uh, Rachel. She's a big reason why all I get to do all this fishing and everything. She's a big part of this company, cutting jigs, making minnows with me, doing everything. So just a big shout out to her and shout out to my nephew and the rest of my family too for being there. And uh, until the next time, go and stay fishing, fish on. Oh, wow.